this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech and I've got an interview here today with Hallie Santo. Um, I really looking forward to this a local player here in the Seattle area with a lot of expertise who's also done a lot of writing online. Um, welcome Hallie. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, could you give us a little bit about your background in Magic, when you started playing, and how you really categorize yourself as a player currently? Sure, uh, so I started playing Magic in 2012, uh, around the release of Magic 2013. Uh, I uh, had just moved to Seattle from New York, and I didn't really know anyone in town, and the one person I knew was a Magic player, um, and he taught me how to play, and I took to the game really quickly, um, really enjoyed it. And because Magic was such a social game, I realized that this would be a great opportunity for me to get out of my tiny one-bedroom apartment and actually meet people. Uh, so I started hanging out at Card Kingdom, uh, going to the Lady Planeswalker Society, which is uh, a local group that is now a huge group uh, that supports women uh, as they learn to play Magic. Uh, and I just sort of started leveling up from there and continuing to challenge myself. Uh, I, uh, you know, started going to LPS, and from there went to FNMs, and from there went to PTQs, and just up the ladder. And now I consider myself a magic grinder. Uh, I go to every uh, preliminary Pro Tour qualifier I can. Uh, I've been making it out to more GPs now, uh, now that I have friends who live in other parts of the country that I can travel and visit. Um, and I just have my sights set on the Pro Tour, pretty much. So what is really your favorite format at this point? Uh, I really enjoy Cube, actually. Um, I play a lot of competitive Magic, I play a lot of Standard, and I, I draft and play Sealed a lot, but um, I really enjoy Cube because it kind of helps scratch both those issues at the same time. Um, you get to play a limited format with some of the most powerful constructed cards of all time, um, and I really enjoy that. Uh, I also love uh, Team Limited uh, because for me, I guess the only thing better than winning a Magic tournament is winning a Magic tournament with two of your best friends. Uh, and I guess even as I've become more competitive, I haven't lost sight of the fact that Magic has always been a social game. Uh, excellent. As somebody who plays in a lot of tournaments, uh, what advice do you have for individuals who are considering net decking? Uh, so in terms of net decking, um, I understand that not everyone is a brewer. I'm not a brewer. Um, I get a lot of my ideas uh, from looking at lists online. Um, but whenever I try a deck that I see online, I try to make it my own, and I would encourage other players to do that too. You're not inside the head of the person who built the deck. You obviously have your own preferences and your own play style, and making subtle changes to the deck can really benefit you. I would say that even if you really enjoy playing a 60 card deck, if you don't think there are any changes you can make to it, always build your own sideboard. Uh, your, local your local meta will always be unique to your region and every tournament is going to be different. So I would suggest having a different sideboard just about every time you play. Excellent, so a lot of the viewers of the channel have definitely played in F&Ms or smaller events. Uh, what would you recommend to them as practical advice for preparing for playing in a GP or multi-day event? When you go to a GP, you're obviously going to have a packing list. Uh, you're going to want to bring, you know, your deck box, your play mat, your dice. Always remember to bring water and snacks as well. You want to keep yourself hydrated and keep your brain stimulated, uh, so Packing things like uh, protein bars, fruit, nuts, granola, anything like that, uh, I would highly recommend that. Um, another thing to do when you're at the GP, um, make sure you go outside and get some fresh air and walk around. Uh, I always try to go outside every two to three rounds uh, to get some fresh air and also to clear my head. And another thing I would recommend is know how much time you need to yourself in between rounds. Uh, some people will want to be alone after they've taken a tough loss and some will want to be surrounded by their friends. And when you're going to a tournament like that, you should know which of those two categories you fall into and make sure you have an environment that that's best for you. In a tournament like that, um, how do you recover from making a mistake either in a game or a, or a tough loss from a game, that type of thing? In game, I try to just let it go. You always want to be present and focus on the board state at hand, and if you make a mistake, the board, game, the board state has changed and you just have to adjust to it, as you would to any other change in a board state. After the round, definitely take time to reflect. Uh, you don't want to make the, mistake, the same mistake twice. I wouldn't dwell on it for more than three to five minutes, honestly. I think if you dwell on your mistakes, then you risk putting yourself on tilt and sort of getting into a spiral of negativity and uh, 
that's not something you want to bring with you to the next round. So try to focus on every round. Once you've realized what you need to do to improve for the next match, just focus on that instead. Uh, so what role does intuition play in magic and how do you improve your intuition? Uh, so I wrote an article about this because uh, I kept falling into these situations where uh, I would have a sense that my opponent had a card that they were very unlikely to have. I think in the in the example I gave, my opponent was about 5% to have a hero's downfall that would take out one of my creatures. And for whatever reason, even though the odds were not in my favor, I uh, I convinced myself that I just had to I had to go for it because you know what were the odds they would have this one card. I ended up paying for it because they did have the card that I sensed that they had. This doesn't happen all the time obviously, but it's happened often enough that I've realized that I have to trust my intuition and if you are the kind of player who gets those urges or those those feelings that your opponent has something even if you don't have a way of being sure. You should try to trust that intuition and try to look for evidence to support that uh, that idea, to convince yourself that this this could be this could be what you think it is. What party advice do you have for yourself, or what would you tell yourself of two three years ago when getting into Magic now? So I guess I have uh, two pieces of advice from my past self. Uh, one practice more. Um, I know there were a lot of tournaments I played in that I did not practice enough for and I still, you know, get into that habit from time to time. Practice, 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 always. And the other thing is uh, to trust yourself. Um, I know in this age we have more information available than ever before. People writing articles, creating other content, making videos, always uh, pushing their opinions on us. And obviously other people's opinions are very valuable, but we need to learn how to trust ourselves and uh, develop our own ideas about what we think of uh, certain, certain metagames, certain formats, certain decks, and sort of take that with us when we go to tournaments. Uh, so you mentioned practice, practice, practice. Um, I, how would you recommend somebody practice for an upcoming large event? I would say definitely uh, test with other people if possible. Um, you'll want uh, you'll want some feedback on your ideas, obviously, and you know testing with people you trust, um, people whose uh, skills and goals complement yours uh, is a great idea. If you don't have that community around you. Um, Magic Online is absolutely the next best thing, possibly one of the best things for practicing for events. Um, just you can you can get so many more repetitions in um, on Magic Online than you can in person, um, and it's available just about any time you want. Especially now that the the leagues are around for constructed format, definitely getting in a lot of practice with that is great. Uh, excellent. Any other parting thoughts or things that you want to tell people? I guess uh, I'd like to thank Brian for having me on, and uh, definitely, you know, follow me on social media and check out some of my other content. <laughs> so, where can we find you on social media? Where Where do you write about magic? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at HowCanSan. Um, I occasionally stream on Twitch at HowCanSan, uh, twitch.tv slash HowCanSan. I'll be streaming more often. Uh, I'll post up a schedule when that's happening. Um, you can listen to my podcast, The Girlfriend Bracket, on GatheringMagic.com, and I also write for Gathering Magic, so if you uh, uh, search for Hallie Santo, you'll find everything that I've put out there. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. I greatly appreciate it, and good luck getting on the Pro Tour. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel over there on Patreon, and thank you once again to Hallie for the great interview. I definitely recommend checking her stuff out over at GatheringMagic.com and The Girlfriend Bracket.